So, that was whatever the hell that was. The Warriors get absolutely steamrolled in Boston. Third worst, I'm pretty sure it's third worst. It's the third worst franchise uh, loss or highest loss in franchise history. I'm pretty sure the first one is against Toronto. I don't know what the second one is, but I'm pretty sure it's the third one I saw. Um, yeah, the Toronto game back in 2021, was it? I'm pretty sure. Oh, was it 2020? Uh, one of those years. That was one of the nastiest losses ever, of course. But it is what it is at the end of the day. Uh, the Warriors came into Boston and got steamrolled by, quote-unquote, the best team in the NBA. While I still love Denver more, uh, the Celtics certainly are the team that should be as much of a favorite as Denver. Uh, even though Denver, Denver is the defending champion, they're just that scary, right? And you saw it from the start. We defended Jalen Brown like he was Tony Allen. They came up with a strategy 15 minutes before the game. And it was uh, interesting. Um, I'm gonna check out the stats on this. I didn't pull that up for some reason, even though I literally thought about it. But uh, they just wanted to have uh, Jalen Brown shooting wide open jumpers. And for whatever reasons, because like Uncle Alchemy pointed out, if you saw his video, who uploaded at halftime last night, which I wanted to kind of do also, but um, <laughs> well, it is what it is. Uh, he pointed out that Jalen Brown, you can force him to take tough shots, right? To take contested shots and get out of rhythm that way. But we forced him into wide open shots or like not sure if wide open completely, right? But very open shots at the end of the day. And with little to no resistance, with little to no second guessing him, and he knocked them down <laughs> fairly easily. <laughs> surprise, surprise. And uh, February, January, February, in February 2024, I'm pretty sure somebody said he had a really bad three point percentage. Yeah, he shot 30% from the three, three point line in 2024, February, and overall. Yeah, so he was in a bit of a slump, I suppose, uh, in in February. So we decided to test that out, I suppose, and it did not work out. And it opened up everything for everyone else because we didn't adjust accordingly. He had 19 points while we had like uh, 22. And yeah, they absolutely destroyed us in the first quarter. Then in the second quarter, it was, it was even worse. They were ready for all our actions. We tried to go to Kuminga in the post against Drew Holiday, against Statum. That was not an advantage for us. Uh, we couldn't do any of the off-ball off -ball stuff because Steph just looked awful. And uh, even when we did those, I think so the Celtics defended it as well as anyone, I, su I would say, man. They, had, they have the personnel that can switch everything, that is lengthy enough, that is smart enough to do so. And they were ready for all our actions, man. They sniffed them all out. And of course, it does not help that Steph was absolutely horrible. Draymond and Steve decided on a strategy to leave Jalen Brown open. Uh, and it was just horrible. And I liked to start the game. Moody had a great energy. I thought Kuminga started off really well. But then we saw the sub pattern where Kuminga comes out of the game. with, And Kuminga and Moody both come out the game uh, fairly early, right? With Well, Moody. Kuminga comes out of the game early with like... What is it always? Four to five minutes in, which feels a little premature. He, it feels like he could be playing more in there. I know he had a bad game tonight, but it's the big picture point overall. And yeah, we were getting tough, hard shots because of the Celtics defense that could switch everything, that was ready to protect the paint against Kuminga, pack the paint against Kuminga, uh, contested everything well, sniffed out those split actions, those off-ball actions for Steph. And those that involve Steph, Draymond, and Kuminga, they were ready for them all. And we simply could not keep up. They shot the lights out also, which does not help. Uh, what did they shoot in the first half? Uh, 15 of 24 from the three-point line, and a lot of them were open. And even when they weren't, uh, they were so much. They, they had so much rhythm, it did not matter, right? So that was that. And is there anything to say, right? We had a good road trip. They tried something that was horrible, and <laughs> at the end of the day, we won three out of four on the road. It was a tough schedule. Steph was awful and probably shouldn't have even played with 
uh, that knee injury, but they wanted to test this out. I get it, uh, but in hindsight, right? But hindsight is 2020. Uh, it is what it is at the end of the day. Good road trip. We still had Dallas lose to Philadelphia, which is, uh, you know, nice for our standing position. The Suns lost to OKC, which is once again a really nice for our standing position. We are still the 10th seed, uh, but the teams ahead of us. No, we are the nine still now. Okay, but we are tied with the Lakers, obviously. But the teams ahead of us, you know, keep slipping up a little bit, which is nice. The Suns, obviously, without Devin Booker tonight, and they have a really tough, tough schedule, I'm pretty sure. Uh, coming their way, I'm not sure about the Mavericks or the Kings or the Pals, but, I mean, any game is pretty much tough in the West if you're not playing this. Well, even the Spurs now are really solid, right? Uh, I guess the Grizzlies, right, because of the, all their injuries, and the Blazers, because, well... They also have a lot of injuries and they're not that good and they beat. Those two games are both against Memphis, I'm pretty sure. But even the Spurs are pretty tough now uh, with the way Memphis playing. <laughs> it's crazy. So it was a bad game. It was a really bad hiccup. But at the end of the day, you're playing against the best team in the NBA, quote unquote, pretty much. And it is what it is, man. It's tough. It sucks. You wanted this to be a, you know, feel great game, measure game, but hey, it is what it is. Now you gotta beat the Bucks, though. We gotta beat the Bucks on Wednesday. Two games, two days off, the Bucks are playing really well. We're at home. We're on, on a back-to-back -back against Chicago at home right afterwards. So we seriously, seriously need this game. Um, and we'll see. We'll see what happens, man. It's gonna be a dog fight, But... It is what it is. I want to say, I still want to check those stats out. Short dashboard, shooting. Can I see Jalen Brown? Oh, yes, I can. Wait, can I see players? I want to see players. And I want to see shooting. And I want to see Jalen Brown. Um, can we actually get something advanced here? Uh, all shot click. Let me go to February just so it's right. How much? Did, how well did he shoot from the outside? I guess he shot fairly bad, so uh, that is that, I suppose. Um, but I still want to figure out. I'm not sure where, where the um, wide open open and stuff is anyway it is what it is <laughs> this is way too long for an unnecessary video but hey we got crushed get ready for milwaukee and it is what it is at the end of the day it is what it is <laughs> we just gotta sometimes say it um yeah as always be kind to yourself and to others and love your source as much as possible stay safe we'll we'll i'll be here for the bucks game on Wednesday, Thursday or something like that. Yeah, bye-bye.